Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So in this Blockchain Basics with Ethers.js series, we took a look at blocks and signing and transactions. We did a little bit of coding so far so we can pull down those transactions, sign some things, all of that stuff. And now we're gonna take a look at some other types of transactions. For example, pending transactions is what we're gonna take a look at today. And the associated attacks with them that can happen based on how they're structured. So before a transaction, it becomes a transaction on a block, it's sitting in something called a mempool. And this visualization we have on the screen is the current Ethereum network. Each one of these blue boxes is a block. And each one of these little South Park looking characters is a transaction, but it's not a real transaction until they hop on the bus and they get published to the blockchain. They're actually just pending transactions and they're waiting to be picked up by miners. Right, And we have all these guys hopping directly from all these exchanges or from people's wallets such as MetaMask or the Uniswap uh, exchange. And they're hopping right into this line. And when they get chosen because they have a higher gas price than the other ones, they'll get added to the block. And then we have these ones down here. These are people who are paying less gas fees so they wait longer and they sit in that mempool. And this creates attack opportunities because we can see all of these uh, transactions happening and we know that if you pay more, your transaction goes first. So I think in the blockchain exploitation series, I talked about that a little bit with like video games where if you see a right answer going through and you know it's gonna work because you automatically calculate it all via some program you have, you can then put in a higher gas fee, beat them to the punch and win that game. Think about that and think about how that attack can happen to make profit. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So now that you kind of get this visualization and, and what's going on here, and the other side is actually Bitcoin. So these will take much longer to actually process about 10 minutes. Let's take a look on the Ethereum blockchain on Etherscan and actually see what a pending transaction looks like. So if you go over to Etherscan and you go to blockchain, view pending transactions, and I'm just gonna refresh this and click the first one. And you'll see here it says pending, right? It also has a duplicate noun, so this might be a bad example. Um, let's choose something else because that might screw something up. So, okay, so we see this pending and after you know it gets picked up by a miner and put into a block, it'll switch from pending to like accepted or whatever the verbiage is here, success, right? So this is a successful transaction now, right? And it has one block confirmation. Once it gets a bunch of confirmations, it's a bit more secure and less likely to, you know, be susceptible to some kind of attack, like 50% attacks and, you know, reverted. Uh, we know that from previous talks. And you'll notice this looks pretty much like a regular transaction. It just gets upgraded to a successful transaction once it gets past that pending status. But the thing is, we, we know the gas price because it's right there. And we know what it's swapping, USDC, WEF, uh, et cetera. We know who it's going to, who it's going from. And you know we have all of that information. So how can we use that in an attack? Well, the attack that we're gonna talk about is front running. If we have knowledge from looking in this mempool, because obviously it's public, we just looked at it, of a big transaction that's about to happen, we can actually jump in front of that transaction and that's called front running, right? So if you have an automated bot, it'll analyze the profitability of a transaction and then it will decide, you know, okay, based on the parameters of this, if I put in a higher gas price and copy this transaction, can I make money by getting in front of this person? I put in my transaction and raise up the price a little bit and then they buy it for a little bit more and raise up the price a lot because they're maybe a big whale and they're buying a ton of Ethereum or a ton of another token. Now, the thing that I purchased, I can actually sell it for more than what I bought it for because the price got raised, it got raised again, and then I can sell it for a profit right after. And I can do this all in the same exact block because the blockchain actually does things in sequential order based on the gas prices, right? So if I have a high gas price, then mine's gonna get run first. And you can see these gas prices, right? This one is uh, 
11.67 GUE. If I look at another one here, just click any of these, you'll see this one is 11.099 way. So that last one would have went first if they were in the same block. And so if I have the high gas price and then the regular user puts in the regular normal gas price, he'll go after me. And then I put in a lower gas price than that user, mine will sell after him and I'll make profit. And this is what we call a sandwich attack. But the thing to note is these are all in the same block, which is kind of odd behavior. And it also has to happen very fast, which is why you need to have a bot analyzing all of these things and running it. Let's take a look at what that actually looks like on the blockchain. So I wrote a program, um, which I'll go over in the forensic series because we're gonna start looking forensically at attacks on the blockchain in that series. We've been looking at some other stuff, so you should check that out. I'll link it at the end of this where we'll dive into more of this code and looking at things deeper. And we'll probably then hop back into here and start looking at Uniswap and, and stuff over there related to this. But what we have here is I printed out all of the blocks and then all of the addresses that were in that block. And I ran it through a Python program I wrote to analyze it. And it came up with these possible addresses that, you know, may actually be front running bot. So if we take a look at that address on the blockchain, so I'll go to Etherscan here and I'll type in that address. You'll notice something in here is that we have a lot of transactions, nine minutes ago, nine minutes ago, 16 minutes ago, 16 minutes ago, 16, 16, 20, 20, right? So it's posting multiple transactions in a block, which is kind of odd behavior because a user would usually take more than 15 seconds to actually create a transaction and run it. So this is probably a bot. And if we click one of these, so example, this is 20 minutes ago, I'll just click this one. And then I'll go to the block that it's in because this is a transaction, right? They're buying some Luna token. But if I go to the block that it's in, there is 233 transactions. And I'm gonna search for this address in here, right? So let me cut off a little because it, it, you know, it cuts it off here. You're not gonna see the whole thing. So we're gonna scale it back a little bit. All right, so let me go through these pages until we find this. Nope. Check the third page, no. Okay, here's the fourth page. Now you'll notice something interesting, right? Take a look at this really quick and think about what we just talked about, a sandwich attack. So we have this attacker and they're posting a transaction, right? And then we have a regular user posting a transaction and then we have the attacker posting a transaction. Kind of interesting, exactly what we were talking about. If we take a look at this, this, is probably going to be the attacker buying something. And let's see what they're buying. They're buying a Luna token. They're swapping 0 0.08 ether or 0 0.8 ether for 3539 tokens. And then if we look at this again and we go above, we could say, okay. So now they're selling that 3539 tokens again, but they're making 0.81 ether. A minute ago is like 0 0.80 something, if I remember correctly. So let's check that again really quick. So if we go here, we'll see again, um, yeah, 0 0.80, right? So they actually bought it for 0 0.80, that 3539, and then they sold that 3539 for 0 0.81, which means, guess what? They made a profit off Luna tokens. And the reason they did that is because in between those two transactions, we have somebody else probably making a bigger transaction here. So if we look at this, this is, should be the Luna token again here. So we have a swap SHIB and then Luna. And this person is doing 3.83 Ethereum, which is much larger than our purchase, which means it moved the market up a little bit, which allowed us to get that profit, right? So that's how the sandwich attack works. And we can view all of this stuff on the blockchain. So what this attacker did is his bot is looking around and saying, hey, you know, who is posting up a bigger order that if I process it and do the calculations, I can make a profit by getting in front of him. And that's what they did. And we could take a look a little closer at this attacker here and see what's going on in here. 
So we have, let's see, I'm gonna post it in here. So here's the contract, and again, 12, 12, 19, 19, right? So all of these are gonna look the same. They're gonna be those sandwich attacks. And there is a contract here. And another thing I noticed that was interesting, I'm not quite sure what this is, but it says, this contract actually self-destructed and was later reinitialized with new byte code. So I don't know if this is some obfuscation type of technique or what, but I tried to actually decode this and it didn't even give me anything either, but you can mess around with it if you want. But that's something also interesting and I noticed in here. So then now how do we actually fix this, right? So one thing is as a user, you know, we hop back into this um, Uniswap and we don't want to get front run, right? Right now it says your transaction may be front run because I'm an idiot. And I said, hey, I'll pay $120 for a $100 token, which is dumb. So we want to do, we hit auto here and it drops down 1.16, but you could put, you know, type in anything you want. You point, usually I see it as 0 0.1 or 0. Dot something like that. And you're less likely to get front run because you're saying, hey, I'm not going to allow somebody to raise the price of something I'm buying up higher before I buy it. You know, if that happens, right, if I'm buying something for $100 and let's say for easy math, I say I have a 1% slippage tolerance. If it goes over $101, I'm gonna, I want the transaction to cancel. I don't want anything to happen. And that's how we protect ourselves a little bit. And there's also something called flashbots. And what flashbots do is if you're utilizing flashbot technology, it actually has a private mempool, and that private mempool, you can't actually view what's going on there. It's a whole another technology. We can get into that later, but just have that on your mind. There's multiple different ways to protect yourself from this. So now in the next video, we're actually gonna take a look at the pending transactions and how to grab those with ethers.js in this series. And in the forensic series, we're gonna show, hey, how can we actually do a very simple way of finding these bots and finding these example transactions on the blockchain like I did within my program here. I was able to grab that and then we were able to look at it with just simple, simple logic, which is just the beginning of a more sophisticated program to start tracking these things. So we're gonna do that over in the forensic series. And in this series, we're gonna pull down those pending transactions. And today we talked about some more attacks and some more basics. Um, you'll notice as these series go on, they're gonna start blending together, right? Because I'm gonna blend Python with ethers.js and I'm gonna blend attacks and I'm gonna blend you know, coding and everything else. So check all of those out. There's a ton of offensive Ethereum on here on this channel and uh, hopefully you're enjoying all of it. You know, hopefully you learned something today. If you did, you know, like it and share it out with your friends. I really appreciate it. Thank you.